Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy Elliott. I know, man, you guys be like, Andy, where's your YouTube videos been at, man? Sorry, we've been training all over the country, traveling. Look, this is gonna be a special video for you. You're gonna love it. We're gonna start dropping videos three times a week consistently, no matter what, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, so you guys can get that training in, keep crushing it, keep killing it. If you hasn't, haven't subscribed, subscribe. My name's Andy Elliott. I made over 700 grand a year selling cars, two million as a GM. All around the country right now, I'm teaching salespeople, whether they're 18 years old or 70 years old, how to level up, how to kill it, how to crush it, and how to go to the next level. This is gonna be an awesome video, so I've titled it, What to Do When a Customer Says No. I'm not just gonna tell you what to do, I'm gonna actually show you and explain to you what a great closer looks like, and you are going to take this, steal it from me, and you are gonna just basically change and recreate yourself and understand actually the cycle and the funnel of selling, okay? So what I wanna do is first of all, I wanna draw a line here, okay? This line right here, we'll just say that this represents the sell. I could do it like a funnel, I could say, hey, here's the funnel, this this is where the customer starts. This is where you first meet them on the phone or in person, and then this takes them down to the close. I'm just gonna use a line here, okay? Because this will be easier, we'll go across the board. I wanna explain something to you. This is at the very beginning when you say hello to somebody. And listen to me, pay attention. Take notes, get a piece of paper and write this down. This video will change your life. It will change your game. It will elevate yourself to a new level and you will understand the psychology of selling. There's people knowledge and there's product knowledge. When I sold, when I made that 700 grand, guess what? People knowledge, baby, 99%. I was 1% product knowledge. I'm not telling you not to know your product, but I'm telling you, if you don't know people, you're never gonna make it, okay? All right, so with that being said, we're gonna say that's where you say hello, and this is where we make the close, okay? Let me start out by saying this. If somebody says no, if they, if they ever say no, it is because, let me tell you why you're getting a no, and I'm gonna tell you how to handle it, how to fix it. Number one, if you're getting a no, it means that there is a low level of certainty. Do me a favor, write that down. A low level of certainty, because listen, I want you to think about it. If there was a high level of certainty, what would the customer be saying? Yes, all right? Now you gotta think about some things for just a second, all right? People have different levels of being sold. I'm a very easy sell, okay? I like to buy stuff, I'm a salesperson. So if you go to sell me and you do a good job, you'd be like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, you know what, I'll take it. My wife, on the other hand, she's a very high threshold, okay? Yeah, you can get her excited, you can say, hey, would you take it if the deal's right? Yeah, you know what, I love it. Man, look how pretty this is. Guess what happens? I'm saying yeah, and she's still like, Nah, you know what, I don't think so yet. And guess what you have to do? You have to raise the certainty in her so she'll hit her threshold so she'll say yes. So number one, the psychology of selling is understanding your customers. Do they have an extremely high threshold where you really have to build massive certainty to a whole nother level that you hadn't had to do on the last 10 customers? Or is this person have a lower threshold, you can just do a great job and more than likely they're gonna say yes, okay? Especially if you can overcome their objections, okay? Because they're gonna have one, uh, and I'll teach you how to overcome it, but we're gonna overcome it. But some people, even when you overcome it, guess what? They still say no, which I'm gonna tell you what to do when they say no, and you're gonna close them, okay? So, if they say no, it is because one reason there's a low level of certainty. We talked about people have different thresholds. If somebody says no, keep building the certainty in yourself, in the car, in the dealership. Be reading them. People have things going on in their head, it's your job to figure out what those things are, and that way you can understand your customer. Play chess with them. Be 10 steps ahead at all times, okay? All right, this right here cannot be missed. If you miss this part, none of this will even matter. I can't teach you how to overcome the no if you don't have control, okay? I wanna explain this. Within the very first three to four seconds, not minutes, 
But seconds, okay, that you meet a customer, it's not like this, hey, my name's uh, Andy, how can I help you? Welcome to the store, can I help you find something? No, 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 it's like this, hey guys, how you doing? It's Andy, welcome to the store, man. Gosh, you guys got a beautiful family, man. Dang, man, I'm lucky to have met you guys. What's going on, where did you drive from? Do you notice how I'm taking control of the conversation? You know why? Because I'm competent at my job. I know it extremely well. I'm gonna ask you a question. Is your show worth paying for? If you can't say yes, well, that's why you ain't getting paid. You need to have a show worth paying for. And you may say, Andy, but that's not my style. I'm sorry. Become an actor. Straight up, you're an actor, introvert, extrovert, it doesn't matter. Right here, within the first three or four seconds of the cell, you have to take massive control immediately, okay? Show them with the 10 with energy, with the 10 with your attitude, all right? People got problems at home, they got things going on, right? Do they need to come into the dealership and meet someone else and look that they got problems going on and that they're not motivated and excited? Or do they need to walk into the dealership and be like, man, you know what? I like this guy, man. People will gravitate towards people in a great mood with great energy. They love it. Even if that's not their style, they will level up and they'll raise their style with you, okay? Now watch this. Right out the gate in the first three or four seconds, you're gonna go meet them. You're gonna take massive, massive control. So write this down, massive control. And you're asking me, you're saying, Andy, tell me about this no thing. It's coming. You want to just hear how I handle no? Or you want me to explain to you how anytime no one ever says, anyone, anytime anyone ever says no again in their life, you can just smash it, take it down and handle it. Put them to bed, move through the objection, get on with the deal and not lose customers. I'm going to teach you that. But right here, first three to four seconds, you got to take massive control. Okay? If you do, they will see you as their guide. They will let you guide guide them through the process. If you don't take massive control, let me explain to you what's going to happen. The customer will own you, okay? And guess what happens? They will interrupt you the entire time. Every time you try to say something, they'll interrupt you. They'll have no respect, and guess why? Because you're not doing your job. Your job as a sales professional is to do what? Serve them at the highest level, give them world-class customer service, and do your job better than anyone else. We're in the era of the worst salesperson in the history of time. It's never been a better time to become great and crush your competition and make more money in the next five years in the car business than you could ever imagine in your life. Now's the time to go all in. Do you ever remember that guy that never went all in? Yeah, neither does anybody else. Don't be that guy, okay? Let's go all in, right out the gate. Massive control, if not, they're gonna own you. Now that I know you're gonna take massive control and you're gonna become an actor and you're gonna put on a show worth paying for, guess what you're gonna do here? We're gonna call this the next stage. I'm getting to the no. Stay with me. This is called the intelligent stage. You know what the intelligent stage is? We could call it fact, find, qualify. Bottom line is we're asking questions, okay? Look, ask great questions, get great answers. So guys, how you doing? Welcome to the store. Okay, awesome, man. After I'm talking to you for one or two minutes, I make a best friend and say, so you guys gonna be replacing your car today? Yeah, we are. Okay, cool. How long have you had it? Oh, well, we've had about three or four years. Nice, man. Okay, cool. Did you buy it new? Did you buy it pre-owned? No, we bought it new. Awesome. Okay, cool. Hey, what was the number one reason why you guys purchased this car four years ago? Maybe one or two reasons. Why, why did you purchase it? Listen, play chess. I want you to truly understand something. You can find out more about your customers, right? And understand by asking questions, okay, than anything else. Listen, they're only gonna tell you so much. And guess what? If you take control, they'll tell you everything. And if you know everything, guess what? You can control this cell the entire time, all right? Here's the spotlight. I got my customers in it. I'm holding it. Sell like a lion, act like a lamb. I'm guiding my customers the entire time, okay? So with that being said, they share with me, well, the reason why I bought it new, we went into the dealership, we wanted to buy a pickup truck, but guess what? The guy said that we had less than perfect credit, so we had to buy this new car. Sound familiar? Yep, guess what? Now you understand what the deal is. Now you understand that they hadn't always had great credit, okay? Or maybe they say, hey, we bought it a couple years ago, but you know what? We bought it pre-owned. We were driving a lot. We needed better gas miles. We don't drive as much 
now. Or it could be even the latter, which is like, hey man, you know, we had a couple kids. We've outgrown it. It could be like, hey man, it's got some maintenance issues. We need to get out of it. And I'm like, oh, okay, what kind of maintenance issues? Tell me about that. And I'm pressing on the pain point. Okay? Ask great questions, get great answers. Now watch. Now we're going to start getting into the meat and potatoes, but I'm going to tell you something, right? If you guys don't understand what I'm saying here about taking massive control, you're not going to do a great job here at the asking questions part, which means you'll probably have a good chance of screwing the next step up, which is going to be obviously landing them on the keyword right car, keyword right car, okay? I got control, I ask great questions, get great answers, I put you on the right car, guess what happens? I'm gonna go take you on the test drive, for the first time in your life, you envision yourself owning this vehicle, you wanna buy it, I know this because I've done my job, right? Guess what happens? I get off the test drive, this is where the no comes in, be ready, I'm gonna ask, for their business, okay? I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna say, hey guys, look, based on all the information you've given me, I feel like we found the perfect car for you and your family. If I could get the numbers 110% to your satisfaction, surely you'd be happy to take it home, am I right? And you're doing this with your head, right? Guess what happens? Guy says, yes. Okay, okay, cool. Take him to the close. I already know that, right? That's a low threshold customer. Okay, he doesn't have to have a high level of certainty. That's a guy that's excited, he wants to buy some. He's like me and you, he's probably a sales guy, likes to buy stuff. Okay, let's say he's not, and he's like my wife. And he says, hey Andy, I appreciate that man, but you know what, I think we gotta cut more cars we wanna go look at. At that point, when he says no, I'm gonna drop down here and I'm gonna say no. Okay, he says no, you will not divert you will overcome the objection, okay? Guy says, hey, I got a couple more cars to go look at, and you say, hey, I understand. Look, let's say you had already gone and seen those other cars, right? And then this one right here, this beautiful car I have sitting here, this was the last one that you went and looked at. Listen, Mr. Customer, ma'am, sir, in the end, after if you've seen all the cars, all these, this one I have here, what would be the deciding factor in the end on actually which car you would actually buy? You know, like, what would be the reason, right? Like, would it, would it be the car itself, regardless of the deal? Or do you think it'd be the great deal that the dealership was willing to give you? I mean, in the end, what would it be, you think? They'd say, well, Andy, it'd probably be the great deal. I say, cool, man, so it's not a matter of if you're gonna buy something, it's when. And the when is when the deal's right, right? Okay, yeah, right, and I say, cool, so if I could save you some time and money, would that offend you in any way? I take my hand, I go to shove it in their chest so that we can get a commitment and go inside, and they say, man, Andy, you know, I appreciate that, man, but I just don't think we're ready for that. Okay, so I gotta know, okay, and guess what I did? I overcame the objection, but you know what? They still said no again. Huh. I need more certainty in the deal. And by the way, I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do at this very moment. When you get a no, and you know that you've overcome their objection, but obviously they still aren't ready, guess what? The certainty isn't high enough. So how do we go and build certainty back in the deal so we can change that no to a yes? Well, it's real easy. We're gonna loop. We're gonna do what I call the horseshoe. You know what a horseshoe looks like? Looks kinda like this, right? Okay, that's a horseshoe, okay? But since we're going this way, we're gonna call it a loop. We are going to take that no, and we're gonna loop back around, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, to where we first started asking them questions. Okay? And you're gonna take, and you're gonna take 30 seconds, and you are going to resell, resell, resell. Why? Number one, they're here, okay? And number two, why we've ended up here asking for their business. Listen, when somebody says no, and then I overcome it, and they say no again. 
you're about to start getting combative with them. You, you don't want to have any combativeness in your deal. You don't want any friction, okay? So you don't want to challenge them again and say, well, you know what, I mean, we found the right car, what's the problem? Guys, at that point, you're gonna have a cold customer. Your customer will go cold and you can't close them. And by the way, what probably happens at that point after they say no, no, overcome no, right? You're gonna start falling and losing rapport, okay? Rapport is the most important thing and the strongest thing that you can have which creates trust during negotiations and overcoming objections. You worked for an hour to build this amazing rapport with this customer. I asked for your business, you said no, I overcame it, you said no. Listen, I'm in jeopardizing, I'm in the point now where I could, I could jeopardize the rapport and the trust if I ask for your business again. Horseshoe. Loop, Shh. go back around to where we started asking them questions. Hey guys, look man, I totally understand. And look, hey, and I apologize if I've asked for your business and it wasn't the right vehicle. Based on all the information that you've given me, when I met you a little bit ago, you told me how your family has really grown. And right now that this vehicle probably had a couple service issues, you guys obviously have Christmas coming up and you didn't really want to spend that extra money. And obviously today, and I know that money's a little bit of a concern, it's not everything, you guys can probably buy whatever you want. If I could pay off your car and you didn't have to figure any of that service stuff out, I took care of everything. And also you didn't have to pay, make your next car payment which allow you to push through Christmas and you didn't have a first payment due for a month and a half. Well that would really ease the financial situation. It would fix the, the, the service problem on the car and the maintenance stuff and the extra money that you would have to spend to keep your old car running. And I know one thing for sure, you said your wife likes sitting a little higher off the ground, right? So guess what? So mama's gonna get that higher ride. She's gonna be safer and I know that we couldn't put a price on safety for your kids, right? If you could, if I'd ask that you get your checkbook out, write a, a check for the amount of what the safety for your kids would be worth, I know you couldn't even write that check. We have found a five star crash rate car that's going to fit all your needs and wants and you told me you wanted your wife to be safe, you wanted your kids to be safe, you wanted to set them a little higher and then on top of that it's got that full warranty, right? And, and by the way, it's got that maintenance, you know, the first three, three years of free maintenance with it. it. I'm just making a point, whatever your car has, you, you name it and you resell, resell why this vehicle's right. And you say, guys, I know this. Obviously having two kids and being married, right? I know that coming out to the, the car dealership is something you have to plan for. It isn't just like, hey, you know what? So let's stop by the car dealership on the way to Sam's, right? You have to plan for it. And I know that your time is very important to you. And the only thing in life that's non-refundable, that they'll never make more of, is time. So I know your time's extremely important to you. So Mr. and Mrs. Customer, my goal today was to ask you that if I could save you some time and I could actually take your vehicle that you know that you're gonna trade it in anyways, and we have found a car that's perfect for you, and I could make that transition happen easily. I know sometimes a car can be, you know, buying a car can be intimidating. I never want that for us. I just thought if I could handle it, make it the easiest transaction that you've ever had, give you a world-class customer service, and show you a deal that you couldn't say no to, would you mind if I at least showed you a five-minute proposal of all the facts and figures, and then in the end, it's completely your decision? Would that be fair, guys? Would you, guys, would you mind giving me the honor to try to serve you at the highest level today? Would that be okay? Watch this. What do you think they're going to say? Yes. And guess what? They said no. What to do when a customer says no? Guess what? They said no. I got them to say yes. And how did I do it? I did it by taking massive control within the first three to four seconds. Asking great questions to make sure I landed them on the right car to make sure that when I asked for their business, guess what? I could advance the sell forward. But I didn't get a yes, so I got a no. So I went ahead and overcame the objection. Guy says, hey, I need to think about it. I say, of course you need to think about it. Look, I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. What I'd like to do, sir, ma'am, is give you a quick five minute proposal of all the figures. That way when you go home, you truly have something to think about. Would that be fair, guys? Thank you so much, guys. Give me an opportunity. Come on inside. Now I got them to try to advance the sell forward, but to say no again. Okay. No, overcome, no. Don't ask for their business again. 
If they said, I need to think about it, and you tried that, he said, well, I don't know, any, I think I still need to think about it. You, you, don't, you don't say, what do you need to think about? Because you're going to put friction in the deal, and I'm telling you, you're going to make your customer cold, you're going to kill your rapport, and they're going to be gone. Loop. Horseshoe on the deal, back around to the question stage. Always go back to the question stage, okay? Now listen to this. When you're reselling the entire situation, time kills deals. This needs to be no longer than 30 seconds, okay, to one minute. Now your goal is, to have massive confidence in this resell. Massive confidence. Unbelievable eye contact. Listen, when your customers start falling apart, can you fall apart? No. They're falling apart, they're unsure. Are you unsure? Are you a little bit panicked because they're panicking? They're saying, no, 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 I think we gotta leave. And you're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Where's my manager? No, you're the one that has the report. You're the one that has the trust. You're the one at this point that needs to hold yourself together. But guess what? If you don't have a plan, you will fall apart. I have just created the ultimate plan for you. But when you resell, when they say no, and you loop, and you go into those questions, and that question stage, for 30 seconds of a minute, and you're going into that resell, you need to crank the energy, crank the excitement, explain to them again why they're here, what you're doing for them. And guys, it's not a matter of if you're gonna buy something, it's when, and the when is when the, the deal's right, right? And the fact is, I know when you find the right car, you also wanna find someone to do business with that can take care of you. Guys, look, that's me. I got you. Have you ever won the lottery? You just did. I got you. I got you. I got you. Bam. We get a yes. Guess what happens? Now you're inside, you're closing up the cell. Guys, this is a training video that people would charge you lots of money for. People don't want to teach you how to become the best closer in the world. I do. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, do it now. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you loved it, shoot me a comment below. And lastly, if you want to level up and become one of the best closers in the world, let's just do this. Right here in the middle, 918, you can text me right Right now, you can text me and I will help you. You can say, Andy, how do I level up and go to the next level? Boom, I'll tell you how to do it. You say, Andy, I need more customers. Done. Andy, I need to become a better closer. Done. Andy, I need to know how to overcome objections. Done. Andy, I need more confidence. Done. Whatever you need, I got your back for life, okay? I love you guys. Shoot me a text, 918-210-0254. Look, 918. 210-0254, shoot me a text, subscribe, like, guys, hit me a comment below. Guys, share it to a couple buddies right now in the car business. You got some buddies in the car business, you got your buddy, he's a real estate agent, guess what? He needs to hear this, this will make him level up. Share it, share the love, help me with the YouTube algorithm. I love you guys, have a great day.